to thank everyone who is a part of organizing this. Um, you all always do such a good job. So, um, and thank all of you for taking the time to, to come and give candidates this opportunity. Um, I've really appreciated, while I've been campaigning, um, the nice conversations I've had with Joe, and um, we've both found that we really like dogs and have that in common. So <laughs> I, I've appreciated hearing what a good dog owner he is. Um, when I was growing up, Chatham was a small rural county, and I never thought that 37 years later I'd be standing in front of a group with, uh, within a county of almost 77,000 residents. And the reason I want to be commissioner is because of who I've grown up around. Community leaders like my mother, Elaine Chioso of the Hall River Assembly, and, and many others who taught me what it means to strengthen your community. I am a teacher and I currently run and direct an outdoor education program for kids providing after school programming, hoping to help create the next generation of land and water stewards. And when you vote for a commissioner, you want to vote for someone that has values you agree with. And my, my goals are informed by who I am and my values. So. Obviously, we've heard a lot about the growth coming to Chatham, and I am so excited to have a vote on the Unified Development Ordinance that is going to help shape this growth coming to Chatham. I think there's a lot, as a commissioner, I can do to really ensure that we take care of current citizens and our future citizens. I am excited to protect the rural character of Chatham. We have a wealth of recreational areas, Jordan Lake, the Hall River, the Deep, the Rocky. And as a teacher, I also want people that work in our county to be a part of our community and be able to live here. So affordable housing has been something I've been focusing on and looking to the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. I'm Katie Kenlin. And I'm running for county commissioner as a Democrat from District 4, and I humbly ask for your vote. Thanks for having me. You're not going away. <laughs> okay. You touched on uh, a couple of issues that relate to urban and rural uh, differences and needs. Could you elaborate on what you see are some of the needs of the urban population and some of the rural population and how you would address those? And, give some equity between those two areas. I really appreciate that question, and I really enjoyed listening to David Delaney, who's running from District 3's answer. Um, we're running as a slate with Franklin Gomez Flores, and I think um, some of the opportunities we have as commissioners are going to be more possible with a strong board that, that agrees and wants to work together um, on common ground. So. Um, I think people move to Chatham for a reason, and it's really important to protect the rural character of our county. Um, I've been looking to see how we can really protect some of our agricultural areas um, by attending planning board meetings, and there's an opportunity to fund a water study that would really help us examine the geology of our county and what does it mean to bring in bigger projects. And as a, um, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected to the board, I will have a vote on the Unified Development Ordinance. And if you haven't heard much about that, it's based off of Plan Chatham that has been in the works for a long time to do just this, protect um, what we love about Chatham and all these beautiful, beautiful areas. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> What would you do, if anything, about, are you particularly concerned about PFAS and dioxin in Chatham? And what specifically would you want done to deal with this issue? Absolutely. <laughs> um, as a cancer survivor, I feel very strongly about everyone having access to clean drinking water and living in 
the most pristine environment as possible and obviously bringing a lot of development and growth is going to have huge impacts on our ability to do that. And again, I'm really thankful to David Delaney, who's running from District 3, to have kind of laid out um, some of the structures of how as a commissioner we interact with state regulation in those areas. But um, I too, in the spirit of Cindy Perry, believe that we can, as commissioners, go introduce ourselves to people in Greensboro on the town board and, and let them know how we're being affected by these um, illegal releases of those chemicals into, into our drinking water. Um, there's also lots of different ways that our county takes in drinking water. We have a lot of people on private wells, we have our water treatment plants, and um, I think there's opportunities as a commissioner to provide more programs so that people can have their wells tested. We currently have some programs, but they're, um, there's, there's more entities in their water or chemicals that we could be testing for to really more thoroughly make sure people know what, what's going into their bodies. So um, those, are, those are some of the ways as a, a board of commissioner I can definitely have impacts on, on PFAS. And I will say that who someone surrounds themselves with tells you a lot about how they truly are going to act upon these things. And um, as board of commissioners, again, should I be so lucky, um, we are not policy experts and you need to trust us to put ourselves around the people that are really going to make the best decisions for our community. Thank you. I have one more question. I know you must be thinking about wastewater treatment, even if you haven't read the report that came out today, but you must have some ideas about wastewater management. Would you share some of those ideas with, you, with us? Are you guys excited to hear more about wastewater? <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, I have read that report, um, and it is being presented on tonight, and when I filed to run as commissioner, I pledged from the beginning to surround myself with local, regional, and state experts so that we really can make the best decisions for our county. It is going to cost a lot of money, raise taxes, and have a lot of impacts if, if we put in um, a county-run wastewater treatment facility. I am open to looking at all the options, and that's a part of what this report is. And you've probably um, noticed that we keep referring to this report because the people that wrote this report are comprised of people that are impacted by the wastewater situation, especially in the northeastern part of the county, and they are also state and regional experts. So what is in that report um, has, has a lot of different options, and unfortunately, no one has the best answer yet. But I think from being a commissioner that wants to really listen to people, to understand how you want to spend your taxes, and um, how you want to shape our community with growth, then I think we have some, some good choices in that report. Um, and again, I, I don't think anyone has the best answer, and I'm very interested in possibly funding a position that would be a wastewater guru, so to speak, that can really be examining the different areas of our county that are gonna be impacted on, on how we address this. It's a multifaceted um, solution that I think we need to really take seriously on, on how we um, spend our money and protect our current citizens and future citizens. 